Let's get into it with our next guest, uh, because talking about this market rally, our next guest actually says that stocks are actually due for a giant pullback. Mark Faber of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report, also known as Dr. Doom, when he comes on this show and others, joins us by phone. Uh, great to have you, Mark. Listen, you've been calling Thank for a 40 to tw uh, 20 to 40 percent correction, yet the gentleman just laid out all the reasons that the markets are moving higher from here. When does this market crack? Well, we don't know when it cracks, and to be fair to me, uh, just around the election, I said that the market would first go up because that the Trump victory would be positive for stocks and not negative. And now okay, but we're past the victory we now. We're past the victory. We're, we're close to the end of the first 100 days. Yes. Uh, the point I want to make is that we are in the euphoric stage. Your previous commentator said that people are piling into stocks. I want to buy stocks when people are piling out of stocks, right. when they're panic selling. And right now, uh, and this I maintained for a while, European stocks and uh, emerging market stocks are far more attractive than U.S. stocks. Keep in mind, the S&P is up 6% year to day. Spain is up 20, Italy 12%, India 18%, Singapore 14%, Korea 16%, and Mexico, who has been attacked by Mr. Trump so badly, is up 19%, all in U.S. dollar terms. Well understood. So I don't think that the rally in U.S. stocks is such a great deal. In addition to that, it's driven by a few very expensive stocks from Netflix to Tesla and so forth. Mark, let me ask you this. What's the biggest risk to this market right now? You mentioned Trump euphoria, which is certainly a piece of the puzzle. Um, but as the gentleman mentioned, he hasn't actually gotten anything through. So maybe this tax reform uh, tomorrow coming is sort of a last ditch effort. If he doesn't do that, is that the biggest risk? Well, the point is, no tax reform deficits will go up. With tax reform, deficits will go even up more. So both scenarios are not particularly bond-friendly. I'm still of the view that we are eight years into an economic expansion, eight years into a uh, stock market, bull market, and I think that uh, recession is over. But you Mark, I, I don't disagree with you there, you. but some bull markets can last 14 or 15 years. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Trump has no principles. He has now gone back before he wanted to audit the Fed and basically attacked Mrs. Yellen. Now, he will go and kneel in front of Mrs. Yellen and say, please don't increase interest rates. Please keep on printing money. Uh, and let's so toss it over. Think... I'm sorry, Mark. One of our, our traders wants to jump in here. Let's toss it over to Scott. Yeah, Mark, it's Scott in Chicago, and I have a question. You've been saying essentially the same thing since, by my reckoning, uh, 2012, uh, and been consistently wrong since then, and on today, today we have... Uh, the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ composite hitting all-time highs. NASDAQ composite above 6,000. The s and is up nearly 1% today. Uh, so if somebody piled in in 2012 or 13 or 14 or 15, they've done pretty well. Why were you so wrong then, and why should we think you're right now? Well, actually, to correct you, I warned of a correction in 2012, and we had one. And uh, we didn't I've have a correction. Correction is a specific term payback. meaning down 20 percent. Look, I yes, correct. I tell you, when all it's over, people will love me for having warned them to have all their money into in stocks. And I'm used to well, people my, my, like my, you my, who always attack me. But in 2009, hey Mark, not, not... who was there and said buy stocks? 
Well, that's great, but in 2012 and 13 and 14 and 15 and 16, you said sell because it's going to crash. And so people have missed more of the recovery than they would have caught if they bought in 2009 and sold in 2012. And I'm asking just a simple question. <laughs> what about your analysis was wrong in 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16 that, that leads you to believe that you're, 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 you're more informed now? Well, the market is far higher, and the bull market has lasted a very long time. And uh, I have to also correct one point you're making. In 2007, 2012, I was relatively positive about bonds, and I argued that emerging markets would go up strongly. And some emerging Mark markets have actually gone up vertically and bonds have actually performed quite well there was recently a study done about how well individuals do in this market and as you can yourself see many institutions in fact 80 percent of them have underperformed the market what about the hedge fund index and you're accusing me of being wrong i laugh at this Okay, Mark, I have a question for you, too. We're talking, and, and I'm not, I am just changing the channel a tiny bit here. You, we've talked about the price of the stock market. Am I to assume that you believe the, under, uh, the underpinning economic fundamentals are awful in this country right now? And is there something President Trump can do to push us more in the right direction? Of course, I'm leaning toward, are these tax cuts going to help? Would capital gains tax cuts help? Would things like that help, in your opinion? I don't think so. I think the U.S. economy and Western economies in general are terminally sick. And we have, since 2007, before the crisis, essentially almost double global debt as a percent of GDP. We have a huge debt load. The U.S. has run a deficit for as long as the eye can see. Uh, the conditions today are more fragile than they were ever before. And unless somebody comes and introduces minus 5% interest rates, which is a tax on the wealthy people, I think the economy is really not in such a great shape. I'm actually amazed that people are so optimistic if you look at consumer sentiment service. Mark, let me ask you this. If you're not optimistic about the United States as a market, fine. Um, what are you buying right now? You mentioned some of the emerging markets that have you know, gone straight up. I'm assuming you want to avoid those. Where's the growth opportunity? What should investors be looking at right now? Well, basically, as I mentioned to you, India this year is up 18 percent in U.S. dollar terms. I think India is still relatively, I have to say, relatively attractive. I would rather than buy stocks like uh, tomorrow, I would rather build up cash positions and essentially invest in euros. I think the euro is attractive, very depressed. I think European stocks are relatively attractive. And among the stock markets, the sectors, I think interest rate sensitive stocks, infrastructure plays will do reasonably well. REITs, REITs will do relatively well, and consumer staples. And I think all these hot stocks, don't forget, I mean, people in fund management, they never remember anything. BlackBerry was the leader in smartphones. Nokia was the leader for many years in phones. Where are they today? Well, things definitely Many change. Many technologies are very uncertain, and uh, the prices you pay for these new technologies are extremely high. Sure, one will survive, like IBM survived, but IBM hasn't done anything for years. Mark, always great to have you on the show. Thank you for your views. We do, you know, respect them, even though we push <laughs> back. You. Um, you know, we're just trying to get more clarity on, on what is going to happen with this market. That's what our viewers need. So Nobody thank you. Nobody has any clarity. <laughs> uh, Trump changes his mind as I change my, I wouldn't 
I was about to say diapers, <laughs> but my tissue paper. <laughs> okay. Mark, All right, take care. Thank you. Yes. Uh, the point I want to make is that we are in the euphoric stage. Your previous commentator said that people are piling into stocks. I want to buy stocks when people are piling out of stocks. Right. When they're panic selling. And right now, uh, and this I maintained for a while, European stocks and uh, emerging market stocks are far more attractive than U.S. stocks. Keep in mind, the S&P is up 6% year to day. Spain is up 20. Italy 12%. India 18%. Singapore 14 percent, Korea 16 percent, and Mexico, who has been attacked by Mr. Trump so badly, is up 19 percent, all in U.S. dollar terms, well understood. So I don't think that the rally in U.S. stocks is such a great deal. In addition to that, it's driven by a few very expensive stocks, from Netflix to Tesla and so forth. Mark, let me ask you this. What's the biggest risk to this market right now? You mentioned Trump euphoria, which is certainly a piece of the puzzle. Um, but as the gentleman mentioned, he hasn't actually gotten anything through. So maybe this tax reform uh, tomorrow coming is sort of a last ditch effort. If he doesn't do that, is that the biggest risk? Well, the point is no tax reform deficit will go up with tax reform. Let's get into it with our next guest, uh, because talking about this market rally, our next guest actually says that stocks are actually due for a giant pullback. Mark Faber of the Gloom, Boom and Doom Report, also known as Dr. Doom, when he comes on this show and others, joins us by phone. Uh, great to have you, Mark. Listen, you've been calling Thank for a 40 to tw uh, 20 to 40 percent correction, yet the gentleman just laid out all the reasons that the markets are moving higher from here. When does this market crack? Well, we don't know when it cracks, and to be fair to me, uh, just around the election, I said that the market would first go up because that the Trump victory would be positive for stocks and not negative. And now okay, but we're past the victory we, now. We're past the victory. We're, we're close to the end of the first 100 days. It will go even up more. So both scenarios are not particularly bond friendly. I'm still of the view that we are eight years into an economic expansion, eight years into a uh, stock market, bull market, and I think that uh, recession is over. But Mark, I, I don't disagree with you there, but some bull markets can last 14 or 15 years. Correct. That's what I'm saying. Trump has no principles. He has now gone back before he wanted to audit the Fed and basically attacked Mrs. Yellen. Now he will go and kneel in front of Mrs. Yellen and say, please don't increase interest rates. Please keep on printing money. Uh, and let's so toss it over. I think I'm sorry, Mark. One of our, our traders wants to jump in here. Let's toss it over to Scott. Yeah, Mark, it's Scott in Chicago, and I have a question. You've been saying essentially the same thing since, by my reckoning, uh, 2012, uh, and been consistently wrong since then. And on today, today we have uh, the Russell 2000 and the NASDAQ composite hitting all-time highs. NASDAQ composite above 6,000. The S&P's up nearly 1% today. Uh, so if somebody piled in in 2012 or 13 or 14 or 15, they've done pretty well. Why were you so wrong then, and why should we think you're right now? Well, actually, to correct you, I warned of a correction in 2012-13.